Video games can be in development for an extremely long time. I mean, look at Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was announced as Zelda Wii U all the way back in 2014, and it took until 2017 for the game to actually come out. But some games take even longer than that, and they enter something known as development hell. Hi, I'm Charlie, I'm back, and let's enter development hell. What the hell was that? Oh, you've gotta be kidding me! Oh. Isn't this just my room? Oh, I get it. I'm in development hell because I'm inside Hell's Kitchen, the Gap and Nintendo. I, I get it. Can I get out now? I mean, I may as well play the game. Metroid Dread has a very interesting development history. Metroid Dread was the first original 2D Metroid platformer since Metroid Fusion in 2002, with the idea of the next one seemingly like a completely dead idea, with the entire Metroid franchise seemingly being dead. But behind the scenes, it was a completely different story. In 2004, the first Metroid game received a remake on the Game Boy Advance, a remake titled Metroid Zero Mission. This used the same game engine as Metroid Fusion, the earlier game that released on the same console. After the release of Zero Mission, rumours started to appear, with people expecting Nintendo to make a reveal for the fifth Metroid game, a follow-up to Fusion. However, this was never set in stone until the June 2005 issue of Game Informer, where it was revealed that Nintendo were working on a game called Metroid Dread. Yeah, the game was in development in 2005. It came out in 2021. Later on that year, in a Nintendo magazine, it was revealed that the game was in development for the brand new Nintendo DS console. The DS also had a game in the Metroid Prime series, Metroid Prime Hunters, which would make Metroid Dread the second Metroid game on the console. But just like the rumor and announcement started, Metroid Dread faded into the distance and no one ever heard about that game ever again. Well, until 2007 anyway, in the game Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. When exploring Valhalla in that game, you're able to scan a data entry which reads, Experiment Status Report Update. The Metroid Project Dread is nearing the final stages of completion. Is this it? Metroid Dread finally coming out after Metroid Prime 3? That's perfect! What a great way to set up the next game! Even if there's like five games that take place in between this game and the Dread one. Oh, yeah, if you scan it again, it says the experiment results were unsuccessful. Metroid Dread, both in-universe and in real life, was dead. Metroid Dread was seemingly cancelled. Years moved on, Metroid Other M came out to, well, I'm sure someone liked it, and it seemed as if Metroid Dread was a distant memory. So why did no one move on? Why did we still believe in Metroid Dread? Why do we think that Metroid Dread is coming out? Is Metroid Dread ever coming out? E3 2009 gave everyone hope as the press was shown Metroid Dread. This version of the game was more similar to Metroid Fusion and wasn't actually called Metroid Dread, but who cares? This was the first real promising sign that Nintendo were fully committed into making another 2D Metroid game. It's not a Metroid Prime, Retro Studios are busy working on Donkey Kong, and it's not Other M because it didn't end too well. This may actually be something different. I want you to take a wild guess on what happened. Go on! Metroid Dread, or whatever the hell the game was called at this point, died once again. Nintendo continued to say that the game didn't actually exist. Which was a bit weird because they were the ones who said it existed in the first place, but whatever. But finally, Nintendo spoke. Nintendo finally admitted that the game did exist, but the game wasn't being worked on anymore. And if there were ever to return to the game, the game would completely restart development. Yet on the 75th episode of the IGN Nintendo Voice Chat podcast, it was confirmed that the story for the game was completed and Nintendo are ready to make it whenever but they're ready. Later, the reason why each version of the game was cancelled was revealed. Yoshio Sakamoto, the director of many games in the Metroid series, said that the hardware was never powerful enough. The Metroid series was dead. I mean, we got Federation Force. 
suddenly Nintendo made a remake of Metroid 2. You know, the one from the Game Boy that nobody really talks about. This game must have done something in Nintendo. At first, Nintendo denied anything to do with Metroid Dread while making this game, but something must have happened. Some creative must have sparked, because in 2017 we also got the announcement of Metroid Prime 4. The Metroid series was back. It's fun lying sometimes. Yeah, so two years after Metroid Prime 4 was revealed, they completely restarted development as the game didn't live up to Nintendo's standards, and we never heard anything about the game ever again, at least for the time being. Two years after that, now in 2021, we see at a Nintendo Direct the announcement of a Metroid 5. Metroid 5 equals Metroid Dread. The game finally came out and people loved it, myself included. Metroid Dread is clearly not a huge game all things considered, like it isn't a system seller whatsoever despite the fact it released on the same day as the Nintendo Switch OLED and was pushed as the big game for the Switch OLED. No one went out of their way to buy a Nintendo Switch just for Metroid Dread, but the people who did buy the game loved every single second of it. It was a fun little game that only gets more and more fun the more and more you play the game. That can't be right. The room wasn't this red last time I saw it. Oh, so we're just discussing games that were in development hell, aren't we? Did any of you play the original Team Fortress? No, I'm not talking Team Fortress Classic, I'm talking the original Team Fortress. You know, the mod for Quake. Valve saw that game, loved it, and got the developers to make a sequel under them. Valve does this quite a lot. They did it with Portal, getting the developers of Narbacula Drop, Portal 2, the developers of Tag, The Power of Paint, Counter-Strike, Dota, and more. It's just what they do. Originally, Team Fortress 2 was going to be developed as an expansion pack for Gold Source, the engine that they made Half-Life on. But instead of releasing the game at the end of the year, they actually released Team Fortress Classic. Team Fortress Classic was made to show how good the Half-Life development kit was for the community. And you know what? It was great. It showed how well Team Fortress can work under Valve, and it really showed what the future of the franchise was. Eventually, Team Fortress 2 was shown at E3 1999 as Team Fortress 2 Brotherhood of Arms, a realistic warfare game. The game looks completely different to what it eventually looked like, and Valve just wasn't happy with what the game was turning out to be so they delayed the game again. I mean, they were literally just developing Day of Defeat, which came out under Valve anyway. In the meantime, Valve worked on Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, and more. And Team Fortress 2 was just this thing that Valve was working on, but they probably weren't ever gonna release it. Three or four different versions of Team Fortress 2 were made during this time, but eventually, at an EA event in 2006, Team Fortress 2 was announced and set to release as a part of the Orange Box with Portal and Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Big day! Team Fortress 2, a game that started development in 1998, came out in 2007. What the hell is happening? The room's becoming more red! Every single time I talk about a game, it gets worse. Is there anything else that I could possibly even talk about? Seriously? Star Fox 2. This game barely counts as being a part of development hell, but I guess we'll talk about it anyway. The popular game Star Fox was released on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System back in 1993. Star Fox 2 was put into development to release at some point in 1995, and it was very close to coming out, like the game was literally done. But sadly, the game was completely cancelled because it was so damn close to the release of the Nintendo 64, and they just wanted to put all their work into Star Fox 64, despite the fact it was already done. Several leaked betas were found, but the game had less and less of a chance of coming out as the years went by that Nintendo stopped doing games on the Super Nintendo. It was just this legend, a part of the Star Fox series. More and more Star Fox games came out, with some of them even saying that they took inspiration from Star Fox 2. But the game just never came out. But then, 
2016 happened. 2016. Nintendo was in the Wii U era, yet we've really skipped some time here, and they just released Star Fox Zero, their third reboot of the Star Fox series, retelling the original story of Star Fox, which is exactly what Star Fox 64 was as well. Star Fox was back, even if Star Fox Zero wasn't all that fantastic. Although I don't mind it. Nintendo clearly saw that Star Fox was important, at the same time, Nintendo was also working on the Nintendo Entertainment System Classic, a mini console that had a bunch of NES games loaded onto it. And clearly, they were also working on a version of that console for Super Nintendo games. Someone working on the Super Nintendo version thought that it would be a good idea to release Star Fox 2, no doubt because of the hype around the series at Nintendo, and eventually convinced the higher-ups to release Star Fox 2 on the Super Nintendo Classic. The Super Nintendo Classic released in 2017 along with Star Fox 2, making the game officially release on a technicality, which means the game was, technically, in development hell. It was a technical inclusion. What the hell are we doing this again? Oh, hey Charlie. John, what the hell are you doing here? I've kind of just been hanging out, jumping around, wanting to talk about video games. Still, didn't we already do this? Look, if you could let me talk about one game, just one game, I'll be happy. I mean, sure, John, but I don't think that's gonna solve anything. God, they have everything in this dimension. You ever play Half-Life 2 Episode 2? Do you remember how it ends? Half-Life 2 Episode 2 ends on an insane cliffhanger that Valve always intended to conclude. I mean, that's just how storytelling works. And Valve seemingly was working on a Half-Life 2 Episode 3. It was always a part of their plan to do a Half-Life 2 episodic trilogy. But seemingly after working on three games at once with the orange box, Valve needed to take some sort of break. Concept art and more was created during this break as well as a story being written, and at some point Valve was working on a deaf character to appear in the game, all setting for a Christmas 2007 release date. It never happened. In this break we also know Valve was working on concepts for Portal 2. But seemingly, Valve had pushed Half-Life 2 Episode 3 to be a bigger and bigger game, yet at the same time they became less and less confident with it. We never heard anything about the game, besides from the fact that we knew everything about it. We seriously knew everything about this game. One story that came out about the game was apparently the plot written by Mark Laidlaw, an ex-member of Valve who published this story on his website after leaving the company and it was called Epistle 3. Wonder what that could be referencing. This story may or may not be Half-Life 2 Episode 3, as Valve was also working on another game called Borealis, but it was very clearly some sort of game set in the Half-Life universe. But since that, there's not really been anything for Half-Life 3 until recently. Huh? They're making a Half-Life 3? Maybe. So Half-Life 3 has been stuck in development hell for ages, and it may be coming out soon, but for now, it's stuck. There we go. You should be able to go home now, Charlie. So that's all you needed to do. Talk about video games. Weird. Can I go home now? Yep. Well, thank you for letting me know. Go to that portal over there. See you later, John. I feel like a crazy person. Development hell was just my room, wasn't it? Ah, the desk. Doesn't it feel like things keep disappearing from here?